Hi, I've done a video already on a beginner's intro to wire jewellery. So this is really about hammering because you also need to know how to use a hammer. So you've got your, you know about your pliers and this is the whammer hammer which has three heads. I'm taking off the nylon head and I can put on a dapping head which is a texturing head or you can hammer in very small spaces with this one. So that's a steel dapping head for texturing or for small spaces uh, for your wire. But the nylon head is the one you'll probably use the most and the planishing head, the steel uh, solid head is the other one you need. So you need a steel block, you need some wire and here we go, I'm going to show you why you would use a hammer for your wire jewellery. So here's a spool of 6 meter 0 0.8 which is 20 gauge um, silver plated copper wire. Now if I go to the end and just make a shape, I'm just going to make a little circle, any shape will do to just show you why I would use the hammer. And I'm just going to start spiralling. And when you're starting out and you've got your hammer, uh, this is, it's a good way of just make any shape you want, any squiggle, any doodle, just play with the wire at this stage and then just see how it changes when it's hammered and textured. So here we go, I'm using just my fingers at this point, so um, just to make any old one-off uh, shape. Now, I need to make a little link at the end so that I can suspend it as a piece of jewellery, say from a chain um, or whatever I'm going to hang it from. And once I'm happy with my shape, there's my shape. So that's, that's the wire. Um, you can see the problem with it at this stage, it's still very soft. You see, you can push it around, it could hook onto things and it could misshape very, very easily. Now, I'm going to stroke hammer. You see, I'm keeping the hammer low and I'm just stroking it outwards away from my fingers. And what that's doing is spreading and it'll be tempering it or work hardening the metal by compressing it together. So I'm going to go just to certain areas and you will see now how it is toughened. Now, what happens when you hammer, it tends to spread the metal out a bit. So I'm just going to compact it back in because it's moved it and spread it out. And you can see, see there's a gap now where my link is. I don't want that to be there. So close everything down again, get it to where I want it. And then I'm using my nylon head. That doesn't mark, doesn't move or spread it. It just flattens it again without leaving any marks. And that's ready now to be suspended from a chain or wherever I want to hang it because it's work hardened, flattened and ready to go and it won't miss shape. So that's why hammering is important. Now let me just show you a few other bits. So let's go on to say a, um, what you would do with a, a chain link system perhaps. So I've cut a bit of wire, I'm going to make a link like an eye pin on one side and centralize that turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. Now I have done a project, I think I've called it stick twist chain and it's great this one for earrings, it's great for as I say a chain link system. So you just make lots of these and then you can link them together. So I'm using my planishing, the steel planishing head of my whammer, I'm hammering the center area only, not the links. So very careful just to hammer that central link and you can see that central part now is flat and it's spread out. And now if I hold that with my pliers on one side and then again on the other side and then twist, there you will find that that metal, that flattened metal is going to twist and you get this lovely little twisty shape in the center which is going to catch the light, be great for dangly earrings, be great for a chain link system. So that's um, another nice useful thing to use a hammer for, for chain linking systems. 
The other reason I would use it is uh, for head pins because sometimes I don't, I just want to uh, flatten and spread the metal at the end, sort of mushroom it out. So if I just go to the end of the wire, I'm spreading and spreading and spreading just that end area. And the direction that I hammer in will mean that the metal will move and spread in that direction. You see how it's flattened? It's mushroomed out and then I can put a bead onto the, the other end and it will slip down but it won't fall off the wire because it's too wide at the end. So that's a good way of having a head pin. And obviously I would use this for a clasp. So here we go, we just make a, a fish hook clasp. So there's the hook and the end, cut that off the spool. And again, I have done uh, tutorials on uh, clasps. So you'll find this in more detail on a clasp tutorial. And just to show you quickly, there's the, the, the clasp, a fish hook. And then if I hammer just the end, so the top end, that's where all the wear and tear and pull and tugging and opening and closing of the piece. So you just want to reinforce that, work hard on it and make sure that it's not going to open up and misshape. So that's become lovely and hard now. Um, I would also do it to the other side of the clasp, the, the eye of the clasp. So I do a wrapped loop for the eye of the clasp. I wrap the wire around my round nose pliers, make a big loop, and then wrap the end of the wire just underneath to secure it. And that means it cannot open. It's not a jump ring that can open. It's enclosed, a wrapped loop they call it, or wrapped. Um, this is the eye of the clasp and just sort of like finish off the ends there where the wrapping is make sure that's not going to scratch or um, You know sort of project out and Snag clothing that's really important with with clasps is to make them really nice and um, flush and uh, No little spiky ends So that's nice and tough don't ever hammer the wrapped area just the very very end and then obviously you're going to make a link at the opposite end so that that can link on to the other side of your necklace and then you've got a lovely fastener ready-made easy fastener so hammering is a very very essential technique I use it for so many things I also use it um, for frameworks but um, let me show you also what the dapping head can do. So if I make a shape, I'm just going to go round and round and round and make something that is a little bit more of a spirally thing. So this is just experimental and you can follow and do the same little experiments that I'm doing to practice so that um, you get the feel for hammering because it is a technique that has to be practiced. So I would start, first of all, by spreading the metal. So I'm flattening, spreading, work hardening with the steel end, um, the planishing end, the steel end of my whammer hammer. And once I've spread that and made the surface area a bit flatter and wider, I can then put a little bit of texturing on that. So take off my nylon head, take my dapping head, steel dapping head, and then all I have to do is just tap, 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 tap on those flattened spread metal areas. And that will put little tiny sort of a texture marks that are always lovely on, you've seen it probably more on metal work, on surface metal, um, rather than thinner pieces of wire. Now what that does, again, it might lift up the metal a bit. So put the, the nylon head back on, turn the piece over, so you're not getting rid of any of the texture marks, and that will just flatten everything down again. And there you go. You've got those little texture marks that will pick up 
um, any light. Now obviously that's not so obvious on thin pieces of wire. It's really used for thicker pieces of wire. So let me just um, go through that again so you can see that this is 1.5 of a millimeter. This is aluminium wire that I'm using here just to show you on something thicker than 0.8. So if I just make a little framework, this is when I've often used it for a framework. Um, I use it for metal work and uh, you know sheet metal and I use it for a framework. So hammer that out to go all the way round, flatten, spread, and that will increase the, the gauge or the thickness of the wire, gives it more surface area. And then I can use my dapping head and that will show the texture or dapping texture off far better than on a thinner piece of wire. Great for frameworks, for pendants, great for uh, lovely big, you know, sort of statement earrings, great for home decor pieces, um, anything like that. Just experiment. I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, using this once you've got the hang of um, you know, how to use it and to get the best effects. So there we have all the three heads of the Whammer Hammer, which is the wire jewellery hammer. You can get this from suppliers. Uh, it's manufactured by Beadsmith and created by me. And there is the du deluxe version, deluxe Whammer, which um, is also available, but this one is the next level. So you can see there's more texturing, there's another texturing head, there's a stamping head for use with steel stamps. Um, so this one really is for all your jewellery needs, for metalwork, for stamping, for wire as well. So just play with the, the hammer and have fun with it.